Hi, in this video we're going to take you to an edit process. So you can see on the screen I have the application running. Let's see if I check Beatrice. If I click Beatrice and let's change her name. Instead of 49, let's make her 4999 and click OK. And you can see that her name has been uh, uh, updated, her age has been updated. Also she's been placed at the end of the list and so we can resort. So we're going to have the edit options available at the end of this video. And there's some issues that we're going to have to work through along the way, so stay with me. So the first thing I have to do is create a click listener that will respond to when a person clicks one item in the list. So let's uh, scroll down the page and let's put in a click listener for listening to a list. So our list is called list view friends lists dot. We do the same idea where we do set on and we have a slight difference though. It's called set on item click listener. And then we need a new on click listener again. So that would be, what is that? On item click listener. It comes from adapter view. So this will work the same way as a button click with one exception. We have a position item listed here. So it tells us which item in the list was clicked. That's very handy. So to keep my code a little bit sane, I'm going to create a new function uh, in another place in the program. Let's call it edit person. All right, so here's the job of edit person. We're going to take the person object, send it to the form, and then display the changes back here in our main screen. How easy could that be? Well, let's find out. The first thing we have to do is create an intent. So I'll name it I. It's going to get the application context so it knows that where the... Uh, the intent came from, and then the specific uh, form name that we're going to open, which is new person form dot class. So the second thing is I want to send some extra data to this new form. So let's get the contents of the person that was clicked at position. So we'll capture the uh, person called P, and he will come from my friends list, and we will get him from the position that was clicked. Next I want to put in all of the uh, properties of the person into the intent. So remember, i.putExtra is the way to send a message to the input form. Finally, let's start the activity with start activity sub i. So you're going to notice that this will launch the activity. It should work. However, it won't fill in the data here into the form yet until we uh, add some listeners on the other end. Let's scroll up the page and see how we listen to events from other forms. So you recall that we used this type of uh, code right here called a bundle of get intent. So let's, uh, let's use this as our example here in the other form. So here's the new person form. We have ourselves a button listener for the OK, but we don't have any listeners yet for the intent. So the first item we'll create is called the bundle object, and we'll name it incoming intent. We'll get the intent, and then we'll get the extras. So we want to get the three variables that come from the uh, incoming intent. So the three variables we sent were name, age, and picture number. So we will use the get string item to get the name. We will use get int to capture the age as also get int for the picture number. So the next step is to actually fill in the edit form for us. So edit text name is set text for name. Edit text age is set text on age and picture number with picture number. This will cause a problem though because age and pictures are not strings, they are integers. So we have to do some extra work in here otherwise our program will crash. So I'm going to go back into the inside of the parentheses and insert the to string method. So we're going to convert age to a string and picture number to a string. Alright, so you might think we're done. Let's see if it works. All right, so far so good. Let's click on somebody like Beatrice. And sure enough, it filled in the form for us. So Beatrice, and let's see, I'm gonna make her age 300 and click OK. Oh my goodness, what happened? We have Beatrice at 300, that worked, but we still have Beatrice at 30. So what's going on here? We created a new clone, a very old clone. So the reason this didn't work out so well is because every time we accept a input from the new user form, the computer right now is assuming that it's a new user and not an edited user. 
and so it created Beatrice twice. Let's do the same thing with Anselm just to prove that it works. So Anselm is now age one, and he is now in the list as the last guy, so he's number one. So instead of adding a new version of Anselm, we want to just uh, update the existing one, or remove the existing one and replace him, one way or the other. So let's go back and look at main activity and see if we can fix that problem. So where did we do the incoming messages? Looks like it was right here. So if we had another field to alert us to see if this was an edited item or a new item, that would certainly be helpful. So let's go down and insert a new item. So here in put extra, in the edit person, I'm going to put an extra thing called uh, edited. And I'm going to give it the number, so P. So let's, let's send it the position. That will let us know that the uh, position was clicked from the, uh, the user here. So we're going to have to capture an, a position number on the other end. So let's go over to here to new user form, and we'll capture that. The first thing I should do is probably create a variable to capture that position. So let's make a, a position to edit, how about we'll call it. And I'm gonna set that by default to be a negative one. So a negative one means that this is not an edited person, it should be just a new person. However, down here in the uh, fill in the form section, uh, we've got ourselves the opportunity to capture this new thing. So position to edit is going to be equal to the incoming text.getInt and we'll put in the word edit. So that will let me know that position to edit has been coming from one of the items clicked on the other um, application window. All right, so now when we send back the information, we should also send back the item called position to edit. Okay, we're getting closer. So back into my activity. Let's go and see the part where we listen for incoming messages again. So if we get an incoming message, we should be able to handle it in one of two ways. If the edited number is above zero, that means it was an edited item and should be updated. If it was a negative one, a position negative one, then it means it's a new person. So I'm going to add a new integer string or integer variable here, and it's going to be called position edited. It will get the int value from the edit tag. So then in the section where I'm going to update the list, I'm going to check if the position edited was a positive number, means it's greater than negative one, then I'm going to remove the existing person so that way when we add the new person, it will uh, not have a duplicate. So let's see if that works any better. Okay, so I got the app running again. Let's try Beatrice. We're gonna make her uh, age is 509. And now Beatrice is 509, and you notice she shows up at the end of the list. So her original record was removed, and a new one was replaced. Let's try it again. And there she goes. So now if we can sort by her age, she shows up last. If we sort by name, she shows up second. Okay, so it looks like we've got ourselves um, a way to also edit our tools and uh, we can use the same form for two different purposes.